So when you want to store multiple values, we have an option of list, which we have used before. But then there are other sequences which we can use. And one of them is tuple. So let's try tuple and let's see what it does. So I'm creating a variable called tup or tube, it doesn't matter what you call it. Uh, in this, if you want to store multiple values, the way you can do that is, let's say, 23, 40, uh, 45, 67, and 43. Now, when you create a list, we have used a bracket, which was the square bracket, right? And when you do that, so this is your list. And how do I know that? Of course, with not the name there, name can be anything. But there's a function in Python called type. Now, when you say type and when you mention a value there or a variable, which is up in this case and when you say enter you can see it says class list again what is class we'll talk about that later but this is of type list now if you want to create a tuple how do you do it there are two options one you can remove the brackets and keep it empty like this now this is also a tuple when you say enter and when you check the tup again or the type again okay now that's Rhymes. Okay, so when you see the type, it is tuple. Okay, now there's one more thing which I have did now. When I clicked on the up arrow, I can see the last commands. Normally, this is how you do in the command prompt or the terminal. But in the IDLE, you will not get that support by default. So what you do is you go to option, click on configure, and there's an option of keys here. In this, if you scroll down, there should be history, next, history, previous. Make sure that you change these options. And once you do that, you can click up and you will get the last command or last history basically. So that's one. You can keep this number without specifying any bracket or you can keep a round bracket. Both works. And when you say enter, again, when you check the type, it is tuple. So that's how basically you can create a tuple. And the way you have done in the list, you can do that, those things here. Example, let's say if you want to find the minimum value out of this thing, uh, it's 23, which is the first value. And when you say max, you will get 67. So these things works. So you can also do sum here. Now, there's difference between tuple and list here. Now, when you said list before, you used to get multiple options, right? We had an option of remove, uh, pop. Then we have also seen uh, append, insert. Now, you, you can do those things because list is mutable. That means you can change the values or you can change the elements of it. Now, in this case, when you say tap and when you say dot, control space, if it is not popping up quickly, you can see we got two options. We got count and index. What count does? Count basically checks for the particular number, how much occurrence you have of the same number. And second, index will give you the index value of a particular value. But there are no methods which talks about inserting or removing. That means tuple is immutable. Let me show you how. So, if I want to fetch a particular value, let's say I want to fetch this 67 here, the way you can do that is by mentioning the index number. Again, we have to use square bracket whenever you want to use the index value. That's something you have to remember. And when you do that, you will get 67. It's straightforward. But if you try to change the value, let's say if you want to have the 65, and when you say enter, it will not work. It will say tuple object does not support item assignment. That means you can't change the value or the elements of a tuple. There's something you have to remember, it's immutable. Now, why this immutability and mutability is important? Now, once we go in the upcoming sessions, when we talk about different topics, I will mention, hey, you know, this particular type or the structure supports only mutable data or it only supports immutable data. So you should know which is mutable, which is not mutable. And when you work on a project and if something is not working, the value is not getting changed, you should know, okay, this is tuple, I can't change the value. Uh, so those are things important and that's why this immutability and mutability makes sense. Now, apart from min, max or type function, we can also use a function which is length to check the length of a tuple and it says four because you got four values here. So there's something you can do. Apart from this, we can do one more thing. Let me say uh, tup a is equal to, so that's the variable. And in this, let me have some values. And it's not just you should have a value of the same type. It can be of different types. Uh, example, I will say two here, and I will say Naveen, and maybe I can have 7.9 as a float value. When you, when you say enter, there's no problem. If I try to print up A, you got all these values. Now there's one beauty about Python as being uh, easiest language to work with. When you say this value, which is top A has all these values, we got 2, Naveen, and 7.9. What if you want to store this value in a particular variable? So let's say I want to store this 2 in a variable num. The way you can do that is by saying top A, 
you can give a square bracket and you can say zero. So with the zero index, this will be picked and it will be stored in num. There's no problem with that. But what I want to achieve is, I want to have three different variables for num, for num, I mean for two, for my name and for this value. So I can say num, comma, I can say name, comma, and I can say num1, another value. Now what will happen is all these values will go into these variables. And if I want to show you how, if I say num, you can say num is 2. If I say name, it's Naveen. And if I say num1, it is 7.9. So this is more of an unpacking sequence because we are unpacking the stuff here into the variables. And this is the beauty of Python. It makes things very, very easy. There's only one thing you have to remember. When you do this operation, which I have done just now, so this particular operation, let's say if you try to fetch one more thing, which, which is num2. Now, will this work? Logically, it should not work is because we got one, one value, two value, and three values. So in total, we got three values here. So the length of this tube A or tub A is three. And the variables you're trying to as, uh, assign here is four. Now, at this point, Python will feel bad and it will give you some bad words by saying, what you're doing? It says not enough values to unpack. Expected value were four and got three because in tub A, in your tuple or tuple, you got only three values. So now we know that tuple is immutable. But let me show you one thing where you can make it mutable. So let's say, okay, not mutable in that sense, but let's see the out example. So let's say I'm creating a new tuple, which is tuple, let's say this is B instead of two, so that you will not get confused with the numbers. And in this, I'm going to have some values. Let's say 34 is the first value. Then my name, Naveen. And then I'm going to have, let's say, a list of values. Okay. And um, that's right. You can do this. You can have a list inside a tuple. In fact, not just list inside a tuple. You can have a tuple inside the list. You can have a list inside the list. You can have a tuple inside a tuple. So because those are the, those are the types, right? And this is actually one element. So for a collection of values, this is one element. So for the tuple, this thing, 34 is one element. Naveen is one element. And this is one element. Now, with this thing, if you try to change, let's say if you try to change the first value 34, of course, it will give you some bad words. It will say what you're doing. No, this will not work. Makes sense. And if you do that with the list as well, if you try to assign a different list or a different value altogether, or different type of data altogether, there should not be an issue. I mean, of course, it should not work. And with this also, it will not work. You can't assign the value. And we have talked about this before. Tuples are immutable, so you can't do this thing. So I'm, I'm trying to replace this with this. And it is saying the same thing. But let me try this. I will say tub B. And if I want to change a value of a list, so let's say in this tuple, we got this list. And in which I have a value, which is, let's say, 5. I want to make this 5, 9. So I can say tub First, I have to target this particular list, and this list is your index number two. So it's a two here. And this from this list, I want to fetch this five again, which is two. In fact, let's try to change four because that's into other sum index so that you will not get confused with two and two. So I'm trying to change this four and make it nine. So if you say nine, there is no issue. If we try to print the top tuple, you can see it is working. So you are able to store or you're able to change the value of a list because that's immutable. Yes, that's a part of a tuple, but you're not changing the tuple, you're changing the list. So it's just one element which is immutable, but the element inside that list can be changed. I know it might look complex and that's why you have to try by yourself to make a sense out of it. In fact, you can do one more thing. I want to introduce a new keyword here. So let's say I want to check if 34 is a part of this tuple or not. So I can say 34 in tube b it will say true true means this is so true and false those are the boolean values and it checks 34 is in tube b basically in will check if it is there if it is there it will return true if it is not there it will return false example is if you try to match naveen in tube b you can see it says false now this naveen is this naveen difference because there is a capital n here okay that's something you have to remember yeah that's about tuple and the most important thing is two one is this learn brackets and second it's immutable <music>